a couple a couple things uh, uh, over here on on my side as far as how the week was spent so, closing out 2023 with um i went out to um i went to our, our, my neighbor's place and we played some board games oh cool yeah we had a good time um and i want to well one point out just in case anyone is is curious about it but uh i've been uh, uh largely uh, i've talked about this game called drop mix which is a um really cool harmonics card game where you mm -hmm. mix music cards together and then you using your phone or your ipad or whatever the case it'll like sync up with the machine and then like you play a card you play a card game and then you use instruments to play to make music and it's all like licensed uh, um specific instrument tracks from like known songs and stuff so it's fun you can mm -hmm. you can kind of just create your own mixes really really cool game um harmonics i know it's not their fault but once again just getting fucked over because uh the publishing of it or whatever got bought by they got no <sighs> luck in the world you know like epic or ea or one of them fucks they don't and, even have a single luck and they just delisted the, the the game so like it's basically in a in a limbo fucked state where you can't get the app to play it at all anymore even <laughs> if you have the hardware uh, so if you've got a phone or an iPad with it, good luck. Congre like you have it, don't ever delete it. You can't re-download it. Fuck you. Um, it sucks because it's such a cool game, and it's now it's just like completely inaccessible um, because of shitty publisher behavior. Are you gonna put it back out? Are you gonna release a new one? Nope. We're just taking this one away from you. And if you happen to already own it, it was a time-sensitive game. It's the equivalent of a card game that's now like an MMO that started and died. You know? So you know what the weirdest thing about that is that people still use like, uh, you know, MMO is gone, you know, whatever. It's like the big MMOs like fucking FF11 still going and it's right. going nowhere. Like right. it used to be under the assumption that an MMO would last four to eight years at, at best. And now it's like, well, I guess some of them is actually going to last until you die. Well, I think there's there, but it can have two phases where it's like that MMO is dead, but we're still keeping the servers online for people that want to still use it. So that would be FF11. FF11 is in maintenance. Yeah, like they, it, it's still there, and you that's can play fine. It, but that's totally fine. You know, um, it ultimately is best when. You don't have to rely on on you know the 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 servers to, to for that to, to happen if if there's a way to make things happen locally or land based or whatever mm -hmm. in any game. But regardless, it's an MMO, so I understand. Um, oh, I'm being informed that FF11 has had in fact had new content in the past couple of years. Um, wow, is it all like please go play 14? Here's a great new sword, and when you use it, you get really I mean, cool things in 14. <laughs> well, I think the funniest thing about that, by far, is that the answer is no. But FF14's next raid series, instead of near, it's going to be, hey, have you played FF11? You should go play FF11, because wow. it's going to be Return to Vanadil. Okay. All right. Well, so it's actually the opposite. The FF14 throwback. is like, hey, did you know there was an FF11 you could play too? That's funny. It's free if you pay for it. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I, I, I assume that just for social reasons, right? I assume that if you go back to FF11, half of it is RPing now, right? No. No? no. It's just people chilling. Wooly, there are, there are like three of my friends that are playing FF11 right now. And by right now, I may, in fact, actually mean right now. <laughs> Immediately. Okay. So, uh, hey, you yeah. know, hey you, so you know how MMO players are, like, diseased in their mind? Mm -hmm. So, like, I got a couple of buddies of mine who play it. 14, and then they run out of things to do in 14. And okay. then it's, like, six months from now until, until Dawn Trail. So they go, well... FF11's right there. Okay, all right. See, important, you're allowed to say that as an MMO player. If I said that, fires. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'll, le I'll leave that to your assessment. Oh, you know. I have the sickness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um... Yeah, so uh, I, I also, uh, um... So, yeah, I got that, 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 that shitty reminder about that game. Um... 
uh, a, I want to bump as well. Oh man! And you found out in that context that sucks. We so uh, like like uh, um, originally Punch Mom like went to try it out with some friends a little before that. And she's like, oh, I can't really find it, and I was like, huh. Okay, whatever. And they moved on, and then looking into it, it turns out, yeah, you just, that's it. I brought it over to play for there. But it's fine. We had some other stuff. I brought over um, Channel A, which, again, I want to uh, um, bump for anybody that's looking for a fun game. It's uh, the game where you have someone plays the producer, and mm -hmm. uh, they are listening to you put together a bunch of cards with words on them, adjectives and nouns, to create an anime title. And you have to then pitch your anime to the producer. It's really, really fun. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a combine the cards to make a, a, the funniest outcome thing. But in this case, it's also kind of about the pitch and how creative you are at, like, selling the idea. And the pitch has to, of course, go with what the producer's particular topical requests mm -hmm. are. So they'll be like, this season we're looking for, well, real example, this season we're looking for um, high school girls and mm -hmm. Cthulhu. Yeah. Right. So then I was able to put together, um, uh, I think it was like C Cutie Sailor Noodle Tan or Noodle Chan. That, That's good. I like that. You know, and it's like, what's Noodle Chan up to? And it's like, I don't know. Why do we call her Noodle Chan? Because her face is half noodles. Ah, ha, 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 that's you know? racism. And so on, and, and and yeah, you just kind of play along with that. So um, it was it was it was it was pretty good. Um, Channel A is is that game. And um, then I got to learn about, um, what was it called? Let me, da, 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 da. it was called Flamecraft, which is a board game where you uh, you shop in a little, there's a little town and there's shops and, you do, you, and there's dragons that go shopping and you help the dragons. Oh, go, okay. And you just help the dragons go shopping and you, you, put, you place them inside the different shops and then you collect meats and oh, this is currencies. Cute. This is horrible. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. And the goal is to get a bunch of, to collect some fancy dragons and, and make the most hearts at the end. <laughs> Basically, it's just it's a very cute game. Aww. Um, it is admittedly somewhat complex on the the learning curve. So oh, when, yeah? when you're first stepping into it, there's many currencies to learn about, many different conditions that lead to many types of states that can happen. And there are there's a checklist of things you can do on your turn. A list of like, if you choose option A, you have to go down this list, or if you choose option B, you go down that list. And like, it, it we, when we were watching on Slopstream, there's a, a skit that was about like this the most complicated game ever, and all the friends are like, "What the fuck is this? Why I don't understand what just happened?" And it kind of like it was, it was particularly prescient because I had that Australian. vibe. Australian. I for, I I forget uh, what the what the skit was, but. It was definitely like no, and one friend is like no, 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 no. You do this, and then you grab the 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 um the tumbler that has the fucking um bingo numbers in it, <laughs> you know. And because it's Tuesday, and you said, Dana. sure, Auntie Donna, Australian. Auntie Donna, yeah, it was it was great, really very funny. I love we love those guys. Me and Pedro are huge fans of Auntie Donna. So that was a really funny skit that kind of like was emblematic of that, especially because right at the end where it's like. God, what the fuck was this? Anyways, he's like, yeah, they're but screaming at each other about how awful it was. Ah, oh. but then, but then, uh, uh, the dude's like, yeah, but it's pretty fun once you get the rules right. I was like, yeah, actually, it was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. was the, yeah, so I was like, by the end, by the halfway point, I was like, oh yeah, no, I get it. This is a lot of fun. But that initial learning curve is like, whoa, you know, you got to be, I guess, and 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 I, and I definitely too, I'm like reminded of every time I want to. Like anytime someone's interested, obviously in fighting games, right? And it's like this yeah. is too complicated. I'm like, right? I'm hypersensitive towards not scaring away the chipmunk. There is, um, you know, you watch Parks and Rec? Yeah, yeah. Fucking cups and towns. Oh, oh whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sure, sure, cones sure. And yeah, 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 yeah. The insane game that Ben was playing. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's what fighting game look like to normal humans. So I'm insanely like sensitive towards not overwhelming the new person in the room with stuff like that. And like you know, it, you have to just you have to be aware, right? Which then leads me to um so yeah, that was a fun time and, and got to to have some fun games there. Um but uh, another game that I played, so um, New Year's, I went to go chill with uh, uh, Sir Meow mm -hmm. and, and uh, Boo. Shout outs to them. Cool folks. Please stop talking. Uh, oh, was... man. Did you hang out at his apartment? Yeah. 
Okay, I was like, he put up pictures of like moving in, got the cat stuff. And I was like hit with this wave of weird anti nostalgia because it looked like he moved into my old apartment. <laughs> okay. It looked like, it's like the fucking, the, the wood, the, the Montreal I know, cross-hatched wood. I, the, yeah. I, I know I think I yeah it's it's I, I think I know like which one you mean because like there is that <laughs> vibe to it but it's a diff different uh, different zone but ultimately the um uh, yeah good hangs you know got to got to chill for New Year's and then we played um we played uh, werewolf Lugaru any familiarity with that you mean like you you tape a bunch of dog hair to your back and kiss or like there's a there's a game you play with a group of people called werewolf where you have to figure out who the werewolf is and <laughs> who the townspeople are and essentially the short version of it is i like i've only ever played it in this uh, in its simplest form and that's that's what i know which is there's a group and depending on how many people you are you pick some to be werewolves and some are just townspeople and then every night everyone closes their eyes you go to sleep and then like a dm will basically be like now the wolves open their eyes pick a victim and then the next morning we all wake up it's like you played the board game amogus yes actually <laughs> yes it is 100 percent amogus in sitting around in a room form right uh and and that's that's my experience with it you know and uh punch mom had never had never played before but it, it, it it's basically that deal and we were in so apparently like the crew that we were with like uh, meow and boo and everyone they all were very used to this game had played it a bunch as kids and so they were playing with the i also only played it like just verbally like you just the, the person would know and, and say the, the story mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um they had like the, the box and all the little pieces and stuff and so out comes all these extra rolls and shit and it's like okay wait hold on you what okay you there's villagers and there's werewolves but someone can be the hunter and right right when the hunter gets killed the hunter can shoot back before he dies and then take someone else out with him right and it's like okay cool you can introduce that okay I'm like all right okay. okay and then there's the little girl and the little girl gets to peek during the night but if the little girl gets caught then uh oh she's in trouble so that might be one of the roles They're like uh okay and and punch mom's like uh okay i guess we'll just have to go along with it and see and these orders the dm will take them in turn and it's like all right, all right okay cool um and then there's the mystic and the mystic during the night can choose someone to reveal their thing when everyone else is sleeping so, right. that, so that the mystic can psych psychically know something about someone and like, oh, 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 okay right and that that happens before the uh, and it's like no 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 what happens before that there's the cupid and the cupid in the beginning is going to pick two people and these two people are lovers and those oh, no. and if one of them dies the other one dies even if there's other people that may even if one's a werewolf and one's a villager they might still have this connection that the cupid forced upon them so that turn has to happen in the beginning okay all right cool <laughs> but then there's the witch and the witch can choose to stop somebody from dying and also resurrect somebody but only once and then they and i'm like man what the fuck are we doing <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it got crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I used to think it was like anxiety or my own OCD or whatever, but as I've gotten older and talked to more people, everyone hits a certain threshold of new information Man. and just freezes. And just go. Ah, uh, I don't. Yeah, uh, there's too much. You that told me too many things at once. <laughs> I'm gonna die. And this is all. This is all preemptively going in with me just playing the base <laughs> level of the game. And again, uh, uh, Punch Bomb, who's just is not nowhere, you know. And so we're sitting there, and like, like it, like we're kind of just laughing because it's like, all right, yeah, but we roll with it. The DM's gonna guide us. It's fine. We'll just have to flow with it. And ultimately, it is. But like it almost comedically there was a point when it was like okay we can bring in more werewolves but for that we should introduce more roles and then someone was like um okay well there's the there's the fool the town a fool and i was like wait what and then there's like a whole bunch of other cards that were not out oh. and then there's the town fool there's the snake charmer and they're like no 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 not the snake charmer that's too compl complicated because the snake charmer introduces a third entity from the werewolves of the townspeople that can win the game in a completely separate and i'm like are you fucking kidding me like what <laughs> how is there more and it's like there's so much more there's a i mean and it just, it just it reads of like okay people who have played this game for the entirety of their lives are so bored and aware of the normal version that they have 18 different spices to stick into it 
you know but yes. onboarding you're just like i what what is happening <laughs> it's one of those things that oh god video games actually excel at specifically so i think of a game that is very similar to this and among us called project winter that i played a little while ago with some of my friends mm -hmm. Um, and it's basically you're you know, there's a there's a the traitor essentially who's trying to kill everybody and stop objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's like 10 different roles, right? And they all have different skills. and They all have different things. But the core of it is that when you load in and you are you either pick or are given your role, it just tells you what your role can and should be doing. And you will be working through that. And yeah, does that mean you don't understand what everybody else can do? That's exactly what it means. Okay. But you don't need to know what everybody else can do. Your buddy can just tell you okay. what the doctor role does or, or whatever. And you can just drill down on your focus. But when you're playing board game and you're there, well, you've picked the mystic. You can do this. Well, you can't. Well, well, you can't do that because <laughs> the werewolf has four turns left. Blah blah blah. But in a game, it'll just go burr, burr, or whatever and stop you. And you go, oh, I guess I can't do that. Yeah. It, so you know, when you if you boot up a game and then you're loading in eight expansion packs and DLCs that have come out and like they're all just stacking on top of each other, so that the moment you press new game, it's like, okay, what the fuck is happening? Like, I I I can't. You're not getting the normal onboarding process, you know. But again, I it was just it it was funny because it, in the end it was fine and we played a very fun game and and you know it all works out because the dm has to just guide you through it and go all right if you happen to be the witch would you like to do this or how about that and then you just move it step by step so that we avoid it but there's definitely just a oh my god i can't believe how many what are we doing here why and there's and there's even more information overload is is the worst 